character arcs. We are doing character arcs today. We've touched on them before, but not really very well. So today we're doing it properly. I'm Debbie Goose and I'm writing a novel here on this channel beginning to end and throughout the process I'll be putting various writing tools, techniques and tidbits of writing advice to the unscientific test. I'll link my running planning sheet in the description below but the TLDR of what we've planned so far is a yet to be named magician is arrested for attempting to poison the king of Erica and is forced to choose between fighting to prove his innocence in a corrupt monarchy or accepting the help of the real poisoner and going on the run. Today we're diving back into character arcs after a number of weeks looking at the world building and we're going to be doing it with the help of Jed Hearn's recent and very in-depth video, How to Write Fantasy Character Arcs Better Than 99% of Writers, which bold title, Jed is a confident man but is someone who usually just pences her way through character arcs, I'm happy to believe it. And you know, YouTube titles are gonna YouTube title. Actually, maybe I should call this one writing a character arc better than 99% of writers. Yeah, I don't think we're going to achieve that today. I'll link the video down below, but I suddenly found it a very enjoyable and thought-provoking watch. So would recommend putting aside, I mean, an hour. It is it's in depth, guys. Um, but putting aside an hour and giving that a watch sometime. Jed goes into a lot more detail than I'll be summarizing here. But after discussing some common mistakes writers fall into with character arcs, Jed goes on to introduce the five elements of a character arc based on K.M. Weldon's book, Creating Character Arcs. One, the ghost. An experience in the character's past that has caused them to hold a specific core belief. Often the experience is traumatic or in some way negative, but Jed points out it doesn't necessarily have to be. What it does have to do, however, is instill the second component in your character. Two, the lie. Something your character believes core to who they are that isn't true. It isn't helpful to your character. It isn't doing what they think it is. It isn't the route to be the person they want to be. However, it's what they believe at the beginning of the story. And that links to element three, the want. Something your character wants. Duh. But more than that, the want is based on the lie. That is to say, it's something your character actively wants because they believe it will bring them fulfillment or happiness or whatever it is they're searching for. But the truth is, it actually won't. They are searching in the wrong place and they don't yet know it. Four, the need. The thing that will actually bring fulfillment, happiness, worth, value, completeness to your character and have them realize five, the truth. Jed calls this the antidote to the lie and I think that's a pretty succinct description. The truth is a retelling of the lie that actually gels with reality and understanding and accepting the truth will see your character become a more capable and complete person. This is the growing part of the arc. Jed gives a heap of examples, but to illustrate these five elements in action every time. He just has no respect to that cat. Come, come sit and look cute. Jed gives a heap of examples, but to illustrate these five elements in action quickly, perhaps a character experienced a negative change in their past, causing them to find safety in familiarity and believe that change is bad. However, nothing can stay the same forever. And when their close friend announces they are leaving for college, the character wants to prevent this based on the false belief that change is bad. However, the truth is that change is an unavoidable part of life and an opportunity for excitement, fulfillment, new challenges and new rewards. And rather than trying to hold their friend back, the character needs to let them go and allow their friend and themselves to grow into the people they will become. Now, if this all sounds familiar, 
Well, it's probably because you're interested in storytelling and novel writing and these ideas are commonly discussed. But let's pretend it's because you saw my earlier video on characterization where I used writing software Dabble's article to guide me in using the Enneagram personality test to create convincing character arcs. That process saw us first pick one of the nine Enneagram archetypes and then use that to create the character's ghost and lie and truth and all these same ideas. And overall, I did find these ideas of ghost and lie very interesting. The article itself was very brief, so I've got a lot more of an in-depth of an understanding from Jed's video. Um, but what I didn't like so much about that particular approach was the whole nine archetypes we were choosing from. It kind of worked for one of the characters we were looking at. She kind of fitted okay, I think just because I went into that video knowing nothing about her, so we just sort of picked one. But for our magician, I already had a bit of an idea of kind of what I wanted or maybe what I didn't want for him, and so placing him into such defined boxes was quite difficult. And I think that resulted in the character arc we created from that not really gelling. So today is an opportunity for a bit of a redo, getting rid of the restriction of those particular archetypes. I mean, look, I'm here to try things and we gave it a try, but now we're gonna try something different. And the next section of Jed's video actually has given me a bit of inspiration for what I wanna do with our magician's character arc today. The arc I made up just before about learning to accept change, that is a positive growth arc, one where the character grows grows throughout the story so as to reject the lie and embrace the truth. However, Jed discusses how character arcs can also be negative and flat. A flat arc sees the character remain more or less the same throughout, and whilst there are certainly interesting things you can do with that, it's not what caught my interest, no. What got my little grey cells spinning and a little scheme forming in the back of my mind was Jed's discussion of negative arcs. Arcs where the character does not come to accept the truth. Rather, perhaps they toy with it only to end up rejecting it and doubling down on the lie. Negative arcs are often associated with villains and anti-heroes. And my magician, I don't want him to be either but I do want him to have a negative growth arc, or at least today I'm interested in trying to create that for him and we'll see if I like it. More than just a negative growth arc, however, I wanna try, and I really genuinely don't know how this will go, but I wanna try giving him both a negative growth arc and a positive growth arc. So as he embraces one truth and grows in regards to one aspect of his personality and core beliefs, he develops or doubles down on a different lie. I'm not exactly sure how it will work, but it could be a bit of fun and it certainly counts as trying something. And uh, that's where my rough script ends. <laughs> Now it's just me and you coming up with some ideas and seeing how this goes. So let's begin by procrastinating and come up with an actual name for our magician because I can't keep calling him that. Um, I'm kind of feeling like we'll just approach naming him in the same way I named Casper, the cat who has decided when I actually want him to not be here. Cassie, Caspi. You can't control cats. So naming Casper, me and my flatmate like just tried different names, gave each one like a spin for a day until we found one we actually liked. So I think we'll just, you know, try on some different names until I get to one I actually like. What I do want is for it to start with M. Milliard Marlin. Man, just man, man with a double N. Marshall, Memphis, Memphis the magician. Memphis, Memph, Memph. No. Marvin? No. Melvin? Sounds a bit like Melvin. Miles. Miles the magician ran for miles and miles. 
Max. We tried Maximus on for him, but we decided we didn't like that. Um, okay, I think for today I'm going to go with Miles. And I kind of like how it looks but with the Y rather than the I. Miles. Miles and Agatha. Yeah, we'll try it on. We can change it. Okay, so the first thing is the negative growth arc. I want to kind of come out of the positive growth arc. So the ghost of the negative growth arc is going to be some of the stuff that's happening. And I mean the obvious thing that happens during the beginning section of this story. I'll link where we did the plot outlining, um, but the first, the like inciting incident uh, kind of aspect of this is our character getting accused of <laughs> murder when he's quite innocent. So that could potentially kind of be the ghost to spurn off a kind of, he's gonna be quite optimistic. So perhaps our negative growth arc could be him overcorrecting in that regards. Cause that makes sense. It's not, it's, it's that he, he's almost going from like one lie and then sort of side skirting the truth into another lie. Hmm? The problem is all of these things, I want to write lies like, you know, authority is bad. And it's like, yeah, but that's not a lie. Is it? <laughs> I guess writing kind of does work on the assumption that you know good things. Um, who says my own moral compass is in any way, shape, or form correct? Uh, my own grasp on reality is uh, truthful. Who knows how many lies I got in my own life? I'm kind of aware of a couple working on. Um, <laughs> so back in the Enneagram video, we did come up with some stuff for him, which I didn't hate. I just didn't... Fully, it's felt incomplete. So I'm kind of hoping that this sort of double thing could maybe flesh out and bring the nuance that I want. Or it might just be a disaster and then we scrap it. That's that's the whole point. We're trialing stuff. We can do that. We're not, we're not, we're not. No one's holding me accountable. Are you holding me accountable? Are you? Oh, you are. Well, thanks. I, I appreciate it. Um, okay, I'm procrastinating, I'm sorry. Wow, this is harder than I thought. Also, uh, Jed in his video actually like right begins off the bat with these things are very interconnected and you can't isolate stuff in that way. Uh -huh, so he is not the one suggesting we isolate it. I don't think anyone is suggesting we isolate it. Um, but, okay, okay. No more procrastination. The next thing I'm gonna say is gonna be a really excellent idea. Okay, I'm not so sure that I'm creating a positive and negative simultaneous growth arc here as I'm just creating like a double barreled positive growth arc where it goes from like a ghost and a lie creating a new ghost and an overcorrection of a lie. So a, a, another variant of a lie on the same theme, but it's also untrue because, you know, multiple ways to skin a cat. Multiple ways to skin a cat um, and also multiple incorrect ways to do it, such as doing it at all, because that is an absolutely awful thing to do, and why is that a saying? Uh, so yeah, from, from ghost to lie to new ghost to new lie, and then eventually over to the truth, so all on the same theme. So I mean, I'm not, I'm not hating that, but it's not quite what I wanted. I wanted, I think the problem is that the theme is the same. We're still looking at this concept of, of you know, whether hard work pays off, whether abiding by the law pays off, whether whether following the rules pays off. Um, because he very initially kind of begins that, yes, if you follow the rules, everything will be good. And he, he's believing that because of some sort of childhood event, which he wasn't really at fault for, but he blames himself for. And um, from that, he's developed this idea that you know, bad things happen to bad people, that if he had just been better, that wouldn't happen. And that leads him into wanting, wanting to follow the rules, wanting to obey, wanting to maybe even kind of not be responsible for things, wanting to, hmm, I want something more specific there. 
His ghost is breaking a rule as a child, which caused, I'm thinking maybe his mother or his father or a sibling, someone, uh, to lose their pup. Actually, a sibling would be a good idea. Actually, no. I don't actually want, you know, so we looked in another video about Agatha and her past and everything, and she's going to be dealing with the, you know, mother dying and all, all that kind of stuff. So I don't necessarily want him to have, like, something super traumatic. Things don't need to be deaf and graphic and violence and everything to still have a profound impact on the way you see the world. So his ghost is, is something upon the theme of breaking a rule as a child uh, which caused him to lose his job in the village and be sent to the city. And this caused him to kind of associate you break the rule and bad things happen, which is not a horrific association to have, but he just takes that to the extreme and believes that if you follow the rules, nothing bad will happen, causing him to have the want of basically, he wants to be told what is right and wrong and he'll just follow it. However, he needs to follow his own moral compass because the truth is, no one else can define your morals for you. That's his positive growth arc. Now we just need to work on interwining this negative growth arc. Uh, so on the one hand, he learns to have his own morals, but on the other hand, he also comes to believe that he can't trust anyone. So one of the things Jed talks about with the negative growth arcs is it, it's not it's not like a reversal of a positive growth arc. It's not that they go from knowing the truth and knowing what they need to being tempted by what they want and ending up with their life. Like it's not a complete reversal, but it is, it is a slightly different order. In a negative growth arc, they don't end up embracing the truth. They could still almost learn it, but then they double down on the lie. So I just see potential there. Let's do it this way. In the negative growth arc, he develops the lie that everyone is out to get you watch your back. No one can be trusted. And there's going to be a few things, you know, sparking this off. And also I can think of a few things happening in the story that are going to uh, reinforce this a little bit. And we need him to end up believing it at the end. So basically what I'm thinking is Agatha's going to betray him because that that is what reinforces and sees him at the end embracing this lie. And I think this negative growth arc does link a little bit towards Agatha as well, because she's also, she comes into the story already kind of believing that the only person you can trust is yourself. And she does embrace the truth and she does learn to trust Miles, as we just called him. I think the story is going to end with Agatha being dead and him being a hermit. I think we're working towards a tragedy. That's the thing. Negative growth arcs do tend to go towards tragedies. I might not have thought this through and I might not actually want to do this. I do kind of want to do it though. <laughs> and I don't necessarily need to decide until, wow, possibly even until I'm writing words on the page. I committed to planning, but I didn't commit to not doing a little bit of seeing how things feel on the page. So negative growth arc. I might revise this off camera a fair bit. We've got his negative growth arc. He's found guilty of attempting to poison the king when he is in fact innocent. And this shatters his idea that the king is a great and wonderful person and a moral anchor point. Um, and he overcorrects and uh, believes the lie that everybody is bad. You can't trust anyone. Everyone is just in it for themselves. And as a result, he wants to turn his back on everyone. He just wants to run away. Go to the Redlands, not, not have to deal with any of this. However, what he needs to do is to learn how to trust with discretion. So whilst in the positive growth arc, he does learn that no one can define your morals for you, he maybe doesn't quite learn how to trust with discretion and overcorrects to only he can define his own morals and he can't trust anyone else to be moral in the way that he sees and he can't find any middle ground with anyone else. Um, whereas the truth is that some people are motivated by self-interest, but not everyone. It's not, it's, 
it's not impossible to find people who care about you um, and do have your interests at heart and you are able to work with. And this negative growth arc will see him nearly come to that conclusion. And that will be with his relationship with Agatha. I say relationship, not necessarily to mean romantic. Uh, haven't decided there. But um, he is going to come and trust Agatha and she is going to have to betray him as part of her own growth arc, which I think is going to involve her learning that sacrifices need to be made in life. Um, she kind of goes through an arc of like, again, believing everything is bad and nothing can be done. Um, and she learns that you kind of have to make your own good. And part of that is not, it's not an easy thing. It involves sacrifices and, and a sacrifice that is going to be, um, seeming to betray Miles here. But that I will determine later for the moment. <laughs> I'm really tired. So I think I'm going to leave it here. Um, Jed's video actually goes, this is, this is only the beginning of it, talking about this kind of stuff. He then starts to talk about um, kind of the shape of it. And he has some really interesting stuff about how to write a good hook to get your reader invested in the growth arc. Um, but I don't think we're going to look at that today because I don't think I'm fully happy with these arcs yet. Though I am... Like, for me, I feel like this is enough to, like, start fleshing it out more. I think, I think, I think we'll go back to plot next. We'll re-outline and we'll see where that gets us. But for the moment, that's it from me. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and see you again soon.